and a typical turbine steam flows at an average speed of 100 miles per hour at a temperature of 200 to 500 degrees Celsius and volume that expands over a thousand times. This is TurbiVap, the steam turbine channel, and in today's video, we're going to talk about the basic principles of operation of a steam turbine. It may seem redundant, but the idea of the video is to take another approach with a little more on the technique behind what actually makes a steam turbine turn. What is the basic working principle behind a steam turbine? Before continuing, if you are enjoying the content, like, subscribe to the channel, and share the video that you give me strength so that I can continue creating content, okay? Now let's get down to business. Before we talk about steam turbines, today's video will remind us a little about the concepts of thermodynamics. It will be something quick, practical, and simple. Every fluid basically has three basic forms of energy. Velocity, which we call kinetic velocity, temperature, and pressure. So keep that data there with you. Now let's do a first analysis and see how these three forms of energy correlate. So there's an experiment, a demonstration, an illustration that first shows if we keep this temperature constant what happens to the pressure and the volume. So you observe that when we increase the pressure our volume decreases. It is an inversely proportional relationship. So since this is clear to us let's add another parameter. Let's add temperature. In fact let's add temperature variation. Then things change a little bit. Since during the operation of a steam turbine, the blades that are connected to the wheels, the rotor blades, they absorb part of the energy of the steam. These three basic forms of energy decrease, that is, velocity, pressure, and temperature decrease. There are also these concepts. So let's now analyze how this happens. Let's analyze the profile of a steam turbine blade. You look at it, it has an aerodynamic profile. When fluid, in our case steam with high energy, passes through this pallet, this profile creates a pressure difference. On top, it has a higher pressure inside the pallet, and outside a lower pressure. And that effect, aided by Newton's law of action and reaction, it creates a kind of lift force. So. And that lift force is responsible for making the rotor turn. But the following happens, as we said there, remember? During turbine pressure, the pressure, speed, and temperature decrease. Essa. This sustaining force alone is not effective, and there is no way to make this process continuous. In the steam turbine, what exists is the function of pressurizing the steam to increase or gain kinetic speed. So who is responsible for this? Inside the steam turbines are the diaphragms and the expander plates. But how do they do it? That's what we're going to see now. We need to analyze a little more thermodynamics. If we look at the profile of an expander or diaphragm plate, I'll leave an animation here so we can understand this and how it works. If we are inside a duct with the same area, same pressure, we will see that the fluid has a constant velocity. Whereas when we restrict this passage, strangle this passage, that is, this area, we have a decrease in pressure. However, we have a gain in kinetic velocity. So that's what these pieces do. They give this speed to the steam. And this process even has a specific name. It's called the Venturi effect, named after its discoverer, back in 1662. So then we have an animation to demonstrate this there. We have a duct there with a passage with the same area and the same pressure, right? So the fluid will flow there at a constant velocity, the same velocity. If we put a passage restriction, an area restriction that is, we reduce this area, reduce the pressure, we have a gain in kinetic velocity. So as these parts do not have a considerable loss of energy, what happens? Uh, the temperature and pressure actually have to decrease to maintain another thermodynamic, actually thermochemical principle, which is the principle of conservation of mass. We have a mass at the entrance and we have to have the same mass at the exit, right? But if we have an increase in speed, the other two automatically have to decrease proportionally. Then what happens? At this moment, we have another mounted in the sequence, another wheel, which will do what? It will capture this velocity, 
This fluid that we are directing, with this increase in speed that it had, it will capture it, and it will go again. It will pass through the vein. It will convert it into kinetic energy and mechanical energy. At that moment again, we will have one more drop in pressure and temperature, and so the process will be repeated for as many stages as there are in the rotor. We decrease the pressure. What happens to the volume? The volume has to increase. That's why in steam turbines, all this flow and this speed of the system, we have to increase it. That's why there in the first stages, the pallets are small, and in the last stages, or in the discharge, in the admission, it is small. And there in the discharge or in the exit, it has the larger pallets, which is precisely to account for all this flow that it increases to. We keep the speed. Otherwise, this machine in the last stages would have a very high peripheral speed. These larger pallets will need to support requests for much greater mechanical efforts. So guys, today's video was just that I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the video wasn't too redundant or too slow. Leave a like, leave a comment, share the video there and you give us the strength to continue there, okay? I'll see you next time.